hello to anyone watching this on YouTube. I'm live streaming it, so if I talk to people, you'll see the chat over in the left. That's why. Uh, I'm also going to close my window because it's very overexposed. It's very bright. And it does not need to be that bright. Um, but we're watching the, the new Bungie Vidoc for Destiny 2 Beyond Light. Um, the Vidoc is called Forged in the Storm, which sounds dope as hell. I have not seen anything about this. I'm not watching it like right as right at release. I had to work and I came home. So everybody else has seen it, but I have not, and I'm really fucking stoked about it. So let's fucking go. I'm probably gonna be since it's not a live stream, I'm probably gonna be pausing and, and whatnot throughout it. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I might just watch it all the way through. Beyond Light kicks off the next trilogy of stories that oh, we're so trying to tell with Destiny. God damn, I'm Players so Players are going to go on a stoked. journey to discover the true nature of light and dark. It's the beginning of players learning more about the darkness. And in fact, going so far as to wield it. It's about leaving comfort and safety behind, walking oh. a different road than one that you may have believed so you were sad. destined for. What makes something bad? What makes darkness Very dark? prophecy aesthetics right there. Huh. Who's right? Who wasn't? Is that fucking Aldrin? That was Aldrin, the right? Characters that you have gotten to know over the last six years. This is way more story than I thought it would be. Origins. Dude. Should I be getting excited about the story as somebody who doesn't care adventure. about the story? The Guardians for the longest time have been bathed in the light, sort of this altruistic force fighting back evil. And now we're starting to move into that gray area between the light and dark. If the darkness reaches out, we must reach back. I will not sanction this. In Season of Arrivals, the vanguard is divided. You have some characters telling you, you know, we should fight these ships, and we have other characters who are saying, no, 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 we should find out what they want. We should get to know them and understand more. But it definitely comes to a head. What was this, this last year in season? Destiny is really just about how Arrivals all the different the one characters and it, factions right? are reacting to these disappeared destinations Which and what that means as the pyramids have arrived in our system. Or no, Not this for one's the first Arrivals. time, but for the yeah. second time. We're gonna see the return of a character who's been absent for a pretty long time in The Stranger, and boy, what? does she have a lot Go. to say. And she has good a lot of time to explain. Yes, <laughs> that's so good. She has shown up to encourage us oh, that makes to me so happy. take on the darkness, and the only way to truly stop it is to work with it. She has a lot to say and a lot of time to explore. Right on time. Oh, that's so good. Why did the darkness invite us here? That Europa is talking? literally like a time capsule. Europa is huge. Killer destination. Freezing cold. Desolate. Some of the most beautiful spaces I've ever seen in the video game. There was a lot built on Europa during the Golden Age, and a lot of that was mm -hmm. built underground. Clovis Bray had some research facilities there. Great director, the limits shit. of technology and innovation there. Maybe He's the fucking lead. Some things that <laughs> we shouldn't have. Of the expansion. Under the eyes, oh. all kinds of secrets. I'm so excited for what players are going to find. God. The storm on Europa was actually something we've wanted to do for a long time. We wanted it to feel harsh. The weather system is so awesome. Like, you're walking through an open space and all of a sudden things start also happening coming across like fallen or vex for the first time you can barely make out the glow in their eyes the sound of the wind that's the very like destiny one on what the weather is looking like like do you guys remember that mission every piece of the environment oh. changing around you to match the storm do you guys remember that mission d1 where you go 
where you encountered the Thrall for the first time in the dark. That's what that reminded me of. Europa itself is a pretty foreboding place. Aramis is there in advance of us, and she set up a forward base. She has lieutenants who have gotten their hands on stasis, gotten their hands on the darkness, and they're learning to wield it. One by one, we will rise again. And so I think her motivations are really interesting, too. Today, we begin breaking free from our chains. That, like, Aramis voice effect. Really challenges Ugh. a lot of the it's ways gross. that we think about light and darkness. She's going to make you think about your relationship with the traveler. She's a compelling leader, and she has a vision. And especially after the collapse Show me my of boy their society, Barrett. people, I think, the fallen wanted someone to follow. Is the light going to be enough? I think we've seen that we need some new tools to fight our enemies with. Maybe it's time to fight fire with fire, or ice with ice. Stasis is, uh, you know, not just a set of new supers, but it's a new damage type. Come the fuck on with this. We've got Solar Void. D I'm dead. We've no, we're pausing. Supers, but it's a new damage type. Come the fuck on with that music, by the way. God damn. Also, UI, very different. Not super different, but like colors. The colors shaded very differently. We've got Solar Void, Arc, and now we've got Stasis. Revenant, Hunters of Us. The idea for Stasis all really came back from the gameplay idea of freezing someone. That was kind of the theme that everyone kind of rallied behind. You know, Dima's an amazing concept artist, had some images that really kind of put us on the right path. What really was landing with that was the more crystalline notion. So when we say cosmic ice, that's kind of where the cosmic comes in. Once he freezes solid, I'm able to hit him again and to shatter him into pieces. The pieces that's break apart so and explode cool. into sharp shards that can damage you. So all of that kind of came together when we landed on that theme. Stasis is going to not only change that's the a way cool that you can attack or approach combat, there's also some really great ways that you can upgrade it. Then you start getting into like the more interesting parts, things that we're calling aspects and fragments, which are additional ways to modify your subclass. Excuse me? A little bit more potent. And then the fragments are the things that are class agnostic, but depending on what your class is and depending on what your aspects are and how you want to play, you're probably going to be starting to select different ones in there. This is just the beginning for Stasis. We're going to continue to expand on it. We're just excited for players to get their hands Excuse on it. Excuse me? Are they adding f aspects and fragments to the other subclasses? When we're creating a new palette like Stasis, we because... do what we call a source jam. Everyone on the team blocks out about a week where we can say, OK, you're going to go out into the world, microphone, recorder, record anything that reminds you of cosmic ice. <laughs> That gives us the palette that we can build. That's so cool to see them doing that, like in their homes. I found personally that the best way to do it was Ooh, at night. That was good. But doing scream screeches and blood curdling yells is a little scary at night. Yeah. Then I had a really rumbly stomach, and that also <laughs> was recorded. There's also a breast pump. <laughs> That's you awesome. Of what I love got. like fully. In Beyond Light, we have new exotic weapons for you. No time to explain is coming back. Yeah. Instead of just being the gun that refills your magazine when you land precision hits, you actually get a little time portal and it starts spitting out rounds alongside you what you can actually have that on top that's of the arc awesome so you can be your own little mini firing squad you built for you it. have a mini arc buddy that you Another just bring one with you is the lament it uses up your sword's energy to give yourself a new combo that ends up in a big spinning slash probably the largest selling point for a lot of people is that it slices right through barrier champions 
Yeah, that's the largest draw for most people is actually going to be the fact that it is a chainsaw sword. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking chainsaw sword. For Beyond Holy Light, we really shit. wanted to create exotic armor pieces that formed a key part of your build around What's which up, all the other parts of your build could revolve. For example, the Titan gets the Icefall Mantle, which is a set of exotic arms that looks like it is crafted from Golden Age tech. When you activate it, you sort of slam your arms down, create a burst of stasis energy, and then you cover yourself in an overshield. The Warlock That's exotic really is cool. Necrotic Grip. If you are facing a I wave of right. thralls running at you, you can nail them with your melee attack. But two more weeks and then to I'm burst done. and sort of cascade mm -hmm. through the whole group. Where is crossplay? It needs to be here soon. Wait, that was Omnigol. That was that was Omnigol. That was the Omnigol strike. Or at least the, the area. No. It a it's a new strike. Yeah, it's a new strike. Defeat Novata. Or Navota, but that looks like the Omnigold arena. There's a lot there for newcomers coming in too. If you've got a friend who hasn't tried it out, it's a really great time to jump in on. They're not like EDZ. Entry Fucking Cosmodrome. I always like call those the same thing when they're not. Last year when New Light launched, we brought back Cosmodrome. a small portion of the Cosmodrome. This year we're bringing back a much larger portion of the destination. Bro. It takes oh some my of god! Experiences that started with original Destiny 1, but oh. puts them and stitches them together in a different way and adds new things and tells a, a different story. And what you're gonna meet in this new opening experience is a character with not one, but two names from Fast and the Furious, Shaw. <laughs> Thank the light. I didn't think we had other guardians on patrol here. What I love about the Cosmodrome is it feels like Destiny distilled. Joe Blackburn, wait. Assistant game director was that his title? Damn, he left and went to work. He was a raid uh, raid designer, and he left and went to work at Riot Games for a while, and then uh, came back, and now he's the fucking assistant game director. God damn! Drum, as it feels like destiny distilled. I I'm so stoked. Like literally, just seeing Cosmodrome images got me so fucking excited. Season of the Hunt picks up where Season Arrivals of left off. Other forces are taking advantage of the darkness to make their move forward, including Zivu Arath, a sister of Oryx, and she's taking this opportunity to build up I mean, an army. family members does Oryx have? We're working with Osiris to try to stop her. Osiris goes out, mm. stumbles across these hive growths that are driving combatants crazy. Damn. Osiris is in trouble, and of course you're his only hope. <laughs> Very stars. No, wait. We warned you it was going to be dangerous down here. Impossible. Is that Aldrin? That is, right? That's Guardian Aldrin. We what the fuck? Catch up to what they're we doing saw it. at the end of Forsaken. Oh, they're Aldrin doing it. Back to life by a ghost. Let's go. Aldrin, That's cool. Who now refers to himself. I am very much not a lore guy at all, which now Eric was telling me how he got fucking stoked as hell about this reveal. And throughout it, I'm, I'm like kind of waiting for the big moment. This is probably why, because he's very much a lore guy. Um, so this is probably why. Whereas I was hoping for more gameplay stuff, but we'll see. There's there's still a little bit of time. Um, but that's so cool. Even for me, as somebody who's not a lore guy, that's a cool fucking story beat. And I'm really excited that they're coming back to that. He doesn't know what he did. The slate's been wiped clean when he was resurrected as a guardian. We know what he's done, and we know what he could be capable of doing. So now we're going to spend some time watching him go back and forth. And that's going to question how we look at him, how we look at ourselves, how we look at the light, how we look at darkness. In Season of the Hunt, we're partnering with the Crow and Osiris to take down the High Celebrant. It's creating these cryptoliths around the system, and those cryptoliths are attracting Elixian oh. Cabal and corrupting them. So Zebu Arath is essentially corrupting herself and army, and it's our job to put a stop to it. I'm really excited to see Zebu Arath fleshed out more and to also, find out more Elixian about her Cabal. I thought the Fallen were the Elixir. for Year Four of Destiny. Sabathun has been 
placing oh, dominoes. No more. And at the end of year four, she's gonna knock down the dominoes. We're gonna see what she's been really up to. And so this year, she's putting the last pieces in place. Huh. Destiny is just a really incredible world. And there are so many stories for us to tell. We have a lot to look forward to. Beyond Light, then The Witch Queen, and then Lightfall, and all the seasonal content between. We feel like we've got a really great way to bring people together. Working through COVID and working through some of the other turmoil in the no. world right now has been really challenging. I have to admit, I've been pleasantly surprised with how well we've been able to get things done. They were one of the first studios to adapt. We're committed to your characters and your community of players. We want to meet you where you are. Crossplay. I think the thing that excites me the most about Destiny's future is how much it's rooted in where we come from. Seeing Philan's reveal. That's an amazing looking cutscene visually. Been hinting at for years. God damn. Why wow, look at the team this is that cool. we're building and continuing to grow and hire the new leaders that are coming up in Destiny. That gets me super excited. Luke Smith, man, what a fucking. Veteran. Destiny's best days are ahead of us. Shit's fucking hype. Like, that's awesome. It's not crazy. Also, yeah, Keith, they, they said that. Crossplay's 2021. They said that. Um, oh my god, that's that's so cool. Okay, so it's not hype because of like any sort of crazy awesome gameplay thing that's new or anything like that. It's hype because it's fucking like there's so much potential. There's so much potential. And like I just know we're getting there. You know, like after playing a, a good bit this last season and whatnot, and really kind of seeing where this game is at nowadays, like, uh, two weeks, two weeks, y'all. Two weeks from today, I believe, right? Holy shit, two fucking weeks. I was going to play some Ghost of Tsushima Legends, but I think now... Maybe I'll just play some Destiny. I don't know. I'm, pr I'm pretty fucking excited. Um, They did release a seasonal calendar. So let's check that out. Yeah, they talked about crossplay in that, in the big Beyond Light, like, unveiling um, season. Or, or stream. Season of the Hunt. Here we go. This is the Season of the Hunt calendar, boys and girls. Actually, hold on. Go back. Um, let me see what they said. Destiny 2 Beyond Light kicks off on November 10th with Guardians traveling to Europa to investigate the threats, mysteries, and power residing there. Season of the Hunt also begins on November 10th. You will be able to start... Earning ranks and rewards from the season pass. Claim your artifact and begin to customize it as you power it up. This season's story mission and new Wrathborn hunt, Hunts activity will kick off the following week on November 17th. Starting with Season of the Hunt, most of the seasonal content and all of the sweet gear will be sticking around for all of year four. We hope this alleviates some of the FOMO that has been present with past seasons. Now you can jump back and experience past season stories, story activities, and loot anytime during year four. Huh, okay, so th they're they're making it more like it's there for the year kind of thing. Interesting. Not a bad idea. I hope they do that well. Like, I'm not sure how they're going to do that when it comes to the story and stuff. But, okay, 11.10! Let's go, guys. Let's absolutely go through this right now. 11.10, November 10th. The Beyond Light campaign begins. Uh, Stasis unlocks Titan Behemoth. Warlock Shadebinder. Hunter Revenant. Uh, Salvation's Grip Exotic. Grenade Launcher Quest. Wow, that's on day one? Huh. Um, free to all players. New destination, Europa. New Cosmodrome experience. New season armor and exotic weapon. New strike added to playlist. Just singular strike. Gotta love it. Uh, give strikes more love. God. 
Uh, new Lost Sectors, 100 plus seasonal ranks, uh, new artifact mods, new triumphs, shaders, and emblems, Iron Banner, The Dawning, fucking bring back SRL, boys! The Dawning, SRL, do it! Do it! Uh, and then over here, Season of the Hunt, November through February. Okay. November through February. Uh, seasonal Artifact and Reward Track Unlocks. Uh, Empire Hunts Begin. That is on the 10th, so... Huh. The Glassway Strike Opens. Do it, sir! Best game ever. Yeah, dude. Do it. Let's see. And then uh, 11, 10 through January 12th. Why is that through January 12th? Uncover Europa's Secrets. What the fuck? That's weird. I don't really understand that. Uh, Adept Weapons added to Trials. First weekend of, uh, of Trials, 1113. Uh, they have talked about that a little bit. 1117 Season Mission Begins. Wrathborn Hunts Begin. So that's different from Empire Hunts. There's Empire Hunts and there's Wrathborn Hunts. Huh. 1121 raid opens deep stone crypt we in there um 12 8 first iron banner december 15th is the beginning of the dawning january 12th is end of the season season of the hunt is november through february so that's why i was very confused or at least that's what it says so that's why i was like why january um Fucking the dawning, let's go. Look at how pretty the tower looks. Christmas is my favorite fucking holiday. My birthday is December 15th. The dawning starts on my fucking birthday. Let's go, y'all. And more. First Iron Banner on the 8th. I don't know if you can fucking care about my Iron Banner at this point. Um, new exotic weapons and armor. Hawkmoon. Yeah, Hawkmoon's coming back. Cloud Strike. No time to explain. Duality. Salvation's Grip. Um, the Lament. Icefall Mantle. Mask of Bacchus, um, Aether's Embrace, Dawn Chorus, Necrotic Grip, Precious Scars. Fuck yes, y'all. That's really fucking exciting. That's really exciting. Oh my god. What did you guys think of it? What did you guys think of it? Also, if anybody's watching this on YouTube, I'm going to cut it there. Uh, thank you. Like, subscribe, smash that bell, all that stuff. But God, I'm really fucking excited. I'm really excited. Thank you for watching. Um, what did you guys?